Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. It's not very often that I do plug-in reviews, but every blue moon, something catches my attention. To the best of my knowledge, not very many people have covered the plugin that I'd like to take a look at today. Brandon from Free Plugin Friday comes to mind. And we have a bit of a high pass thing happening up here that seems to start leveling off around 20 hertz. So, you know, it's, it's adding some color and it's adding something to the sound just by putting it on. Outside of that, I've not seen any of my favorite YouTubers covering this plugin. Today, I'd like to shine a spotlight on Comper from Analog Obsession. Comper is many compressors in one. At its core, it's two compressors in series. The first compressor is internal only, while the second compressor has selectable internal or external side chaining. In addition to the side chaining features, both compressors can be either VCA, FET, or Opto, or any combination of the three. This allows you to mix and match and create the compressor of your dreams and really get that sound that you're after. If you're not familiar with Analog Obsession, all of the plugins from this developer are free through their Patreon page. However, if you enjoy the plugins and you have the spare change, I highly recommend supporting the developer. Let's take a look at Comper and compare it to some of my favorite compressors. The project I've got open is a quick sketch of the chorus of Lifeless Lemonade by He Is Legend. I just quickly played something on the drums, guitar, and bass just to have something to work with. Let's take a quick listen to what I've got so far and then we'll take a look at Comper and some of the other compressors that I like. If you have a keen eye, you may notice on my master track I've got an instance of Comper. I'll click on Comper to open up the interface, and we can see that I have my first compressor configured to act as a VCA compressor. I'd like to tell you what ratio that I'm using, but one thing that I'm not liking about the plugin is that I cannot see what my ratio or any of these settings are without actually moving the knob first. One way to work around that in Reaper is to click the UI button at the top right corner of the effects interface. Clicking this button toggles between graphical mode and a simpler interface. Now that I'm in the simpler interface, I can see that my ratio is set at about 2.2 to 1. I've got my threshold set at minus 7.9. And actually, as I continue to look over some of these parameters in this so-called simpler mode, it's a little bit confusing because I'm showing internal external on my first compressor, but I know that the first compressor can only be internal. For this particular plugin, let's not worry too much about the simpler mode and just go back to the graphical user interface and forget that I ever mentioned this. So knowing that I'm not able to actually see what these values are without wiggling the knob, I suppose I can just grab the knob and move just a little bit to see where we are. And it looks like my ratio is somewhere around 2.2 to 2.4 to 1. Since I moved it, I think I need to move it back just a little bit. And we'll settle on 2.2 to 1. My threshold is at about 7.7. .7. My attack time is about 10 milliseconds. My release time is about 60 milliseconds. And I've got a little bit of makeup gain. As we said in the introduction, the first compressor is only able to use internal side chaining. If we look down below, we can see that the second compressor is set in FET mode. A FET compressor is typically used to catch much faster transients, something in the same family as the 1176. The popular VCA style compressor is the LA-2A. So looking at my parameters on the FET compressor, my threshold is set at about minus 2.7. My ratio is about 3.6 to 1. I do not have my external side chain engaged, and I'm running a high pass filter of about 137 hertz. My attack time is set as fast as I can get it, which is 0.1 milliseconds, with a release time of about, let's see, it says 0.12 seconds, so I would say that's around 120 milliseconds. If my math is wrong, please forgive me. Both the first and the second compressors have input trim, so you can give it plus or minus 15 dB. And I've got a little bit of makeup gain as well. Both compressors also feature a wet and dry mix. Let's take a quick listen to that same portion of music again, and I'll toggle the compressor on and off. We'll start with it off and see if you can hear the difference.
As I listen to that, if I'm honest, my settings may be just a little bit aggressive. I think that I heard a little bit of crunchiness, possibly some distortion. But overall, I feel that it helped to glue the sound together. It brought the guitars more forward and helped them to sit better with the bass and the drums. It definitely added a bit more snap and punch to the drums and gave them what I would call a much more solid sound. Now, just for the sake of argument, some of the other plugins that I've got in my mastering chain are a Pultec style EQ, RIA EQ, tape saturation, Event Horizon, which is a limiter and clipper built into Reaper, and finally a loudness meter. So with the understanding that I do have some additional processing going on on the master track, let's take a listen to the drums and compare Comper to a few other compressors. We'll close these dialogs, solo my drum bus, and let's bring up the effects dialog. I'm currently using a VCA compressor that's modeled after the LA-2A. The particular one that I'm using is T-Rex White 2A by IK Multimedia. Let's take another listen to that same portion of music with the drum soloed, and pay particular attention to how the LA-2A style compressor is affecting the drums. I'll toggle it on and off as we listen so you can hopefully hear the difference. We'll start with the compressor turned off, and I'll set the section on loop, and let's give it a listen. Now I know that some of you may already be saying that there is a definite volume difference between the plugin being turned on and off, and I understand that. I did want to add some makeup gain just to help the drums to sit better in the mix, but what's important to understand in this case is that I have level matched the different compressors to the best of my ability. Let's take a look at a different compressor and see how that sounds. So we'll switch off the LA-2A style compressor, and we'll switch to the British channel. This is another IK Multimedia plugin and this emulates an SSL style channel strip. The compressor that's built into this channel strip is also a VCA style compressor. We'll engage that and take another listen and see if you can hear the difference. Those two sound fairly similar to my ear, but let's take it a step further and listen to Comper compared to these two paid plugins. We'll activate Comper, and you can see that I've got this set to VCA mode so that it mirrors the same style of compressor that's present in the White 2A and the British channel. To my ear, all three of those compressors sound very similar. Either one can be used in the mix and it would work just fine. Historically, I've used FET style compressors on my drums, but I'm really enjoying the way that the VCA style compressors are helping to glue everything together and it still gives me the level of punch and attack that I want. It seems to add a lot more glue and cohesiveness to the drum kit and make it sound like one unit. One other thing that I failed to mention with Comper is by clicking the Analog Obsession logo in the lower left, we can enable oversampling. Let's play through this one more time with the Analog Obsession compressor and see if we can hear any difference with the oversampling turned on and off. We'll start with it on. One thing that you may notice is the Analog Obsession plugin, when oversampling is disabled, is a zero latency plugin. We can see over here in the performance meter that with the oversampling enabled, we're running at approximately 128 samples of latency, and disabling that 
takes us down to zero samples of latency. So it's nice to have a compressor that's zero latency, high quality, and zero cost. At this point, I'd like to compare the three compressors back to back in the mix. Now, I don't have a way to switch between these three easily without stopping, so I'll do my best to edit them together for a seamless playback and post. We'll start with the British channel, then switch to Comper, and then switch to White 2A. See if you can spot similarities as well as differences in the compressor. I'll unsolo my drums, switch back to the British comp, and let's take a listen. And there you have it. All three of these compressors work very well in this project. I like the way that all of them sound on the drums, and if I'm honest, I'm having a hard time picking a favorite. Which one did you like best? Both of the IK Multimedia plugins are paid plugins, but again, Analog Obsession is free, unless you choose to make a donation through Patreon. Analog Obsession offers many high-quality plugins for your favorite DAW, with Comper being its first to support Pro Tools AAX. Not that that matters to us Reaper users. So leave a comment below and let me know which one you liked best and why. And if you'd like to try Comper yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee or Super Thanks link below. Membership is also available for the channel, and I'd love to hear your ideas for member-exclusive content. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. that time that Google came up with a gaming system? Me too. I liked it.